All right. Hi, everyone. In this video, we're going to go over the solutions to worksheet 5.2. So um, first up, when we take a look at this, we have a 4,600 kilogram helicopter accelerates upward at two meters per second. What lift force is exerted by the air on the propellers? So this actually isn't very different from the, um, from the elevator problems that we were just doing. Uh, we would have the force of gravity on the helicopter, and then we would have the lift force um, upwards on, from the propeller spinning. And the lift force is gonna need to be bigger than the force of gravity because um, right, it's accelerating upwards, so we need a net force upwards. So the next thing to do is just to sum our forces in the y direction. Uh, we are accelerating, and that's gonna give us the lift force minus the force of gravity. So um, the force of gravity is m times yg. We are solving for the lift force, so um, we have ma on the left-hand side. I'm gonna go ahead and add the force of gravity to the other side. And when I do that, I'm going to switch it to mg because re let's remember that the force of gravity is really mass times by 9.8. And that's going to give me my lift force. So now all I need to do is go ahead and plug in the numbers. So that would be 4,600 for the mass, uh, an acceleration of 2. It is positive 2 because it's going upwards. Um, I got my 4,600 for the mass again times by 9.8 for acceleration due to gravity. And I can just go ahead and put that into my calculator. And I'm going to get that. Um, right, I got 4,600 times by 2 plus 4,600 times by 9.8. That's going to give me 5,420. Well, I'm sorry, 54,280 newtons. That's my answer. OK. Let's look at the next one. So the next one says the maximum force that a grocery bag can withstand without ripping is 250 newtons. Suppose that the bag is filled with 20 kilograms of groceries and lifted with an acceleration of five meters per second squared. Do the groceries stay in the bag? Okay, kind of interestingly enough, uh, the the equation or the force diagram is going to actually look pretty much the same. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call it even a lift force again of the person pulling up on the grocery bag, um, though it could be, you know, tension or something like that from the handles or something, but why not just keep it the same? So that means that my for, or my equation is actually going to pretty much look the same. I have MA equal to F lift minus FG. Now it's really tempting to want to put the 250 newtons in for F lift. But actually, what it's better is to solve for F lift and then compare it to 250 to see whether the lift force um, is greater than 250 or less than 250 to tell us whether it rips or not. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and solve. Uh, we have MA still left on the left side of the equation. We're going to add the force of gravity to the other side. So again, that's going to put a plus mg on the left hand side. Um, and that's going to leave us with F lift on the right hand side. So then we're going to go ahead and put in the 20 kilograms worth of groceries. For M, we have an acceleration of 5 that is an upward acceleration, so I'm going to make a positive 5. I got my 20 kilograms um, for mass again. I got my 9.8. And so again, calculate F lift. So that is 20 times by 5 plus. 20 times by 9.8, and that gives me 296 newtons. So um, 296 is greater than 250, so the bag will rip. because the lift force is greater than 250 newtons. So 
Uh, let's see here. Next one. So number three is actually kind of tricky, but let's take a look at this. So first up, uh, a student standing on a scale in an elevator sees that their weight is 840 as the elevator. So let's see here. So they're at rest. And when they're at rest, the, so the scale is going to tell them that 840, or is going to tell them the, the normal force actually, which seems a little bit backwards, but just when you're normally at rest, your normal force and your gravity are the same. So it's really telling us that the normal force is 840 newtons, which in the rest case is going to tell us that our gravity is 840 newtons. As the elevator accelerates upward, the scale increases to read 1050. So um, I'm going to call it accelerate upward. And so in that case, the force of gravity is the same. It is still 840 newtons, so that hasn't changed. But if I'm accelerating upwards, then my normal force has got to be bigger. And we actually know that it's bigger because we know that it's 1050 newtons because it says it is. So uh, note that I'm trying to draw my normal force greater than the force of gravity. And then uh, when the elevator slows to a stop at the 10th floor, uh, the scale drops to 588. So this is, um, we're actually accelerating down or just slowing down, right? So then Again, I have the force of gravity. The force of gravity is equal to 840 newtons. And my normal force is equal to 588 newtons. So uh, let's see here. It says then to draw a force diagram for each of the for the student during each of their three parts. So done, we've done that. Um, again, noting that the force. And the middle one is greater, the upward force is greater than the downward force. And then here, the normal force is smaller than the downward force. Accelerate or determine the acceleration for the beginning and end of the trip. Okay, for each one of those, um, for the up, up one, we have our, right, we're accelerating. And we have our normal force minus our force of gravity. So MA is equal to, it's going to be 1050 minus 840. Uh, the problem is, is we actually don't know what the mass is. And so what we have to do is the force of gravity is equal to M times by G. We know that the force of gravity is equal to 840 newtons. We know that G is equal to 9.8. So 840 divided by 9.8 is going to give us M. So that's going to give us 85.7 kilograms as our mass. So 85.7 kilograms times by A, right? 1050 minus 840 is 210. So there's our acceleration for the way up, accelerating for the way down or the slowing down, sorry, would be it's basically the same process, right? Basically the same force diagram. And so again, we're left with 85.7 A is equal to 588 minus 840. I'm going to skip a couple math steps there, but 588 minus 840 is going to give me negative 252. And then I'm going to divide that by the 80. 
And the negative sign just tells us that our acceleration is downwards. So moving along, um, a sign in an elevator states that the maximum occupancy is 20 persons. Suppose the safety engineers assume the mass of the average rider is 75 kilograms. The elevator itself has a mass of 500 kilograms. The cable supporting the elevator can tolerate a maximum force of 3,000. What is the greatest acceleration? So, okay, real quick, force, we got our force of gravity on all of these things. We have our upwards force of tension. Um, and let's see here, things, things that we know. Uh, the tension is gonna be 30,000 Newtons because we wanna know the maximum, right? So the maximum tension to figure out the maximum acceleration. Um, we know that the mass is 20 people, right? 20 people times by 75 kilograms each plus, right, the total mass or the mass of the elevator itself. So, um, so the people are going to be 20 times by 75, right? They can have a total mass of up to 1500 kilograms plus the extra 500 kilograms. The total mass that you can have is 2000 kilograms. So when we go to sum our forces, we have MA is equal to tension up minus force of gravity down. Add the force we're trying to find the acceleration, right? So uh, that's going to be 2000A is equal to 30,000 minus 2000 times by 9.8. So let's see here. 30,000 minus 20,000 times by 9.8 is going to be 9.8. So then you're going to take that 10,400, divide by 200, and that's going to give you 5.2. All right, there you go. So the elevator can't go have an acceleration greater than 5.2 or else the cable would snap. All right, as we go to take a look at these, these start to get a little bit more difficult. So, um, and that's because we're using the kinematic equations as well as F equals MA. So in the first one, uh, it just gives us some information and we got to figure out acceleration and then we can figure out the net force. Um, so, you know, basically if we think about the car, there's just one force of accelerate, you know, the force that's causing the acceleration, causing it to, to move. We're just trying to find that force. So um, first up to figure out the acceleration. So we know that basically it says it travels from rest, which tells us that um, V naught is equal to zero meters per second. We know that it travels a total distance of 40 meters. Um, we know that the time takes three seconds and we are looking for the acceleration, right? So that right there is gonna be the John equation because it has distance and time in it. So let's write out the John equation. So we know that it goes 40 meters. We'll assume that it starts at the starting line zero. Um, also, we know its initial velocity is zero. It's one half a three seconds squared. So that's going to give us 40 is equal to uh, three squared is nine. One half of nine is 4.5a. So 40 divided by 4.5 is eight. A is equal to 8.9 meters per second squared. Um, so then we just take that, plug that into, right, when we sum our forces, extraction, we have 
ma because it's accelerating. The only force is the force of the car, right? What do we want to call that car? Or the net, which is the net force, um, right? So that's that's the only force we could call that net too, maybe. <coughs> And that just means total force. Maybe we call it that instead. And so that's going to give us 710 kilograms times by 8.9 equal to the net force. So 8.9 times by 710. So the net force is equal to 6,319 newtons. I typed everything in right. Yep. So there you go. This other next one is kind of opposite, right? So in this case, uh, we have, right, basically there's they're hitting the brakes. And that's the only force acting on this car. And we know that it is 5,000 newtons. So we can use F. Uh, let's see here. Right. So when we sum our forces, MA is equal to force breaks because that's it. And so we will get 1,000 kilogram car times by A, which is what we're looking for equal to 5,000 newtons, and that's going to give us A is equal to 5,000 divided by 1,000 is 5 newton or meters per second squared. And I'm actually going to throw a negative sign on that because I know that I'm going to want it to be negative because I'm slowing down. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that. It doesn't come from the math at all. I'm just thinking ahead to be like, this car is slowing down. I'm going to probably want to put a negative sign on that. So I know that the initial velocity of the car is 25 meters per second. Uh, the final velocity of the car is going to be zero because it's coming to rest. I know that my acceleration is negative 5 meters per second squared because I just calculated that. And I'm looking for the distance to come to rest. So that's going to be the Ringo equation. So the Ringo equation b squared equals v naught squared plus 2a delta x. So 0 squared is equal to 25 squared to negative 5. Sorry, I almost forgot. And 0 squared is obviously 0. Uh, 2 times by negative 5 is negative 10. So I got 0 is equal to 25 squared is 625 minus 10 delta x, where delta x is the distance you go, add the 10 delta x to the other side. And that's going to give you 62.5. Yeah. There we go. Okay, diver one. It starts to get a little bit more complicated here. So um, it says what, <clears throat> we have this diver drives off a 10 meter platform. So uh, they start up here with a V naught is equal to zero meters per second. And then they dive down to the water. And we wanna to try to calculate their velocity down here. During that time that they're falling, we know that their acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared because they are falling toward the ground, right? So they're in free fall. So this actually has nothing to do with forces. So uh, this is just a straight up kinematics problem. So for that one, we know that, right? The initial velocity is zero. You know, the acceleration is 9.8. You know, the distance they fall is 10 meters and we would like to know the distance or how fast they're going at the end. So that actually is just the Ringo equation again. So 
two times by 9.8 times by 10 is 196. Square root that. And you get 14 meters per second. So now when we do part B, this is a two part problem. So um, basically we know that it's entering the water at 14 meters per second. So that actually becomes our initial velocity for part B because then water, the speed that you have at the beginning of the water is, um, is 14 meters per second. So uh, we now know that my initial velocity is, or the girl's initial velocity as she hits the water, it's 14 meters per second. We know that her final speed is zero meters per second after she's come to rest, right? Because she comes to rest after two meters. We know that delta x is two meters. Um, and we want to know her acceleration because ultimately we want to know the net force. So therefore we want to know what her acceleration is. I'm expecting the net force for the acceleration to end up being negative. So let's take a look at this. So zero meters per second. And we want to know what the acceleration due to the water is. And yet another one where we're going to use the Ringo equation. And we have final velocity is zero, initial velocity is 14. It's two, a, two meters, right? So zero squared is obviously going to be zero. Uh, so let's see here. We can subtract the negative. The four, 14 squared is obviously going to be 196. So that's going to give you a negative 196 on this side is equal to 4 times a. Divide the 4 over, and you're going to get the acceleration is negative 49 meters per second squared. It's a pretty big acceleration, but think about like someone entering the water is going to be fairly big. Um, acceleration. And then so lastly, you just do F is equal to MA. And their mass is 65 kilograms. Their acceleration is 49 meters per second. Uh, F is equal to 65 times by 49. And that gives you 3,185 newtons. All right, last problem. So during a head-on collision, a passenger in the front seat accelerates from 13 meters per second to rest in 10 seconds. So start with a, or sorry, 0.1 seconds. So we got our initial velocity is 13.3. Our final velocity is, oops, final velocity is zero because we're coming to rest. We are looking we get the time is 0 0.1 seconds, and we're looking for the acceleration. So that's actually going to be the Paul equation because we have time and we have velocities. So that's going to give us 0 meters per second is equal to 13.3 meters per second plus a times by 0 0.1. So let's see here. Uh, we can move the 13.3 over to this side, equal 0.1a, divide by 0 0.1, so that's going to be 13, or negative 13.3, divided by 0 0.1, which is going to give us 133, or negative 133, so a is equal to negative 133 meters per second. Now, that's a really big acceleration, but keep in mind, this is a car crash, right? So the driver of the car holds out, holds his arm out to hold his 25 kilogram ch child who's not wearing a seat back, the seat belt from smashing in the uh, dashboard. What force must he exert on the child? Well, equals MA, right? He's applying the only force, so obviously that's going to be the net force. So F is equal to 25 kilograms times by the negative is just because it's slowing down um, and just tells us the direction. So I'm going to go ahead and drop the negative sign because the negative, again, is just telling us the direction. It's telling us backward. It's a backwards force, uh, meaning opposite to the direction of motion. So meaning he's applying the force 
towards the back of the car as opposed to the front of the car. So he's applying a force of 300 and 3,325 newtons. Okay, so here's the thing, right? Like, is that a lot or a little? Like, we are not really familiar with, um, with newtons. And so force of gravity is just, is, so it's part C says, what is the weight of the child? So, okay, so gravity is just 25 kilograms times by 9.8. So child weighs 25, 9.8. They weigh 245 newtons. So part D says transfer both of those into new pounds by you basically divide by 4.45 newtons, right? So you can take pounds um, and multiply them by this, which essentially is dividing by 4.45, and that'll turn it into pounds. So let's take this first, let's take the weight of the child. Let's do C first. So 245 divided by. 245 newtons divided by, or times by, so we'll do this, one pound per 4.45 newtons. That's going to give us 245. That's going to be 55 pounds. So it's a 55 pound kid. So now you can kind of picture how big this kid is. So let's do this for this one too. That's gonna be 3,325 newtons times by one pound per 4.45 newtons. That's gonna give us, let's see here, 3325. Essentially, that's dividing by 4.45, and that's going to give us basically this this driver is going to need to apply a force of 707 47 pounds. So what that tells us, what are, right? What are the chances that the driver will be stopped? Right? It is unlikely. Right, the driver can hold the child back. Right, because they're even if it was like, you know, bodybuilder dad, they're still applying that. Think about the the how you would apply that force. Right, you'd have to like hold your hand out to your side and then apply a backwards force. Um, I don't think there's very many people in the world that can apply that big of a force kind of in that backwards direction. So, all right, thanks for watching. Hopefully you found this useful. As always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. And uh, thank you very much.